welcome back to the Noise Footer podcast. This week we have Rosie Crow. Hello, Rosie. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Very well, thank you. So, um, could you just describe what your what your band is and what sort of music you do? Um, well, I, I, this is always a tricky question, actually, for me. But I'm a singer songwriter, and um, I play keys and synths. And I've been recording for a little while now, and um, the band that I play with, it's like the latest setup is like a synth um, going through a bass cab and then a, a live drummer as well. And we're using like a Roland SPD SX for like samples and stuff. So it's like a kind of like hybrid of electro and non-electro. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That yeah. sounds good. Um, and what, what sort of were your inspirations? What kind of uh, led you down that path because you've done other things in the past sort of more more uh, guitar based and um sort of more like, instrumentally i suppose or i don't know what the right word is <laughs> um i know what you mean yes i think that um like when you record you've got so much control and using samples and programming like i i find some of that so satisfying that to recreate that live um it, you know that's that's where it gets interesting so that kind of like electro influence and not having guitars is it, i'm really into that at the moment yeah yeah it's definitely sort of um well music kind of is cyclical isn't it and so stuff come kind of comes in and out of fashion and there's like yeah a lot, a lot of things that kind of and it's, it's really hard to kind of someone always said to me like don't ever try and be in sync with what's happening just kind of do what you're doing and hope that yeah they, <laughs> hope that you're there yeah um, yeah and i think i'm i'm like that too you know i'm sick of too i'm like always in and out of like i go full circle on things you yeah. know i i started off um playing uh piano and singing and um that was like 10 years ago and i just did that you know very simply yeah. and then i brought in like drums and then i brought in a bass and then i brought in a guitar and then like you know you start adding and then i like kind of like deconstruct again yeah. and then start over again <laughs> so this is probably like the fifth time round i've like gone back to... <laughs> that's good though isn't it i, I like yeah I, I i i've been in and out of bands and various styles of bands and it's um it's interesting isn't it because there's a, a part of being a musician that is like loving listening to music and loving different styles of music and growing and kind of going on like your own little journey and yeah, yeah I, i'm a big i'm a big fan of that i never thought i'd be doing like a 1940s 50s band when i was in a metal band no. as a child <laughs> yeah yeah that's it yeah and these things like in, you know you get like external influences that you might not even realize you've picked up on that will kind of like guide you yeah. in a certain direction which i i love anything like that you know it's just like yeah it's cool yeah what sort of um so a lot of the things uh a lot of this podcast is for me has been like discovering people's create how creativity happens for them and inspiration yeah. and finding out like how people write songs and stuff is there any uh anything that, how, how does that work for you what does, what happens when you're writing a song um it's usually like a feeling um that i don't know like it's a lot of the time it comes from um like a sort of weird and wonderful place and the like the album that i've just been writing and recording is called weirdiful and that's like i made up that word because it was the only sort of thing i could come up with that made sense to what inspires me so i grew up um in the middle of nowhere on bodmin moor and there was like it's an incredibly like barren ugly place in in parts and then incredibly beautiful in other places yeah. and um there's a lot of strange folk that live up on the moor and but i used to love all of that too so it was like kind of finding the beauty within those like bizarre environments so at the moment that's like i'm harking on that emotion that evokes at the moment that's the thing that's kind of making me tick yeah so um looking for the kind of weird and wonderful in things and then i'll kind of like have an idea um and i'll sit at the piano and i usually just start like improvising around whatever's kind of you know coming out and that then somehow molds into a song it's i don't know if it even molds it's almost like it's already written and i'm kind of like uncovering it bit, yeah uncovering it basically yeah. yeah yeah it's like um i would say it's a bit like 
say you had like a, a lump of coal and you were chiseling away and then inside there there's like a little diamonds which is you know perfectly formed and I'm kind of like just chipping away at stuff and that feels like the process I don't know if that makes much sense but no, that's lovely yeah that's yeah a really nice description of it it's <laughs> I whenever I, I used to write a lot and I stopped doing it um and I, I and then I started then I started doing this podcast trying to find out where it comes from and like because I, I don't know what happened it was like a a thing that I I it's almost like a different version of me did it and I can't remember I yeah can't, I can't sort of uncover that secret um yeah. yeah it is odd it, creativity is odd does that do, do you do, does the song stay do you sort of demo them and then go into the studio and uh, sort of keep true to that idea or does it grow even more so in the studio and evolve usually into grows yeah in the studio i've i mean over the years i've attempted to record myself and have like a, a home studio yeah. but um I'm I can be a bit of a perfectionist and I end up deleting everything constantly which is quite destructive <laughs> so um what I end up doing which is quite funny is I record like any ideas um I hand write them yeah on bits of paper and then they're like on backs of receipts and stuff like that and they'll just be like in a box and then then I'll like jot down sections on my voice memo on my phone yeah so um those are my demos and then i i usually go to gareth at cube recording and go uh yeah i've got this idea and he goes oh god here we go again <laughs> and <laughs> and then we go from there and start building it and yeah i guess it's a bit like writing the song it kind of then might take a slightly different turn in the studio but i i really really love the studio it's one of my favorite places to be it's yeah it's awesome but i haven't mastered doing it myself yet i just always break it yeah. and... <laughs> it's hard isn't it be like I, I used to love recording at home i used to i've got like uh, you can't really see it but there's just like a a, a sea of just recording equipment and stuff yeah and just nonsense and just like sitting and making little things and recording little things i think that's like the like I always wonder what happens when I die, and all this like s s weird like words and weird song parts are just uncovered. Yeah. Some they'd be like, "You're a nutter. What is all this?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's like sometimes like I'll get like a voice memo, you know, on my phone that'll be like, "Oh yeah, that's a really good hook," and I'll just be like, I don't know, washing up or something, and then I'll be like singing this, you know, yeah. It's, so very silly really no it's good it's good i i, I love the process because it's it's quite unique to everybody and there's also a lot of similarities that everybody seems to have like joe was talking about little little bits of paper with words on and it's you know it's yeah kind of, kind of a common or like um when i was talking to you, um jordan and matt from moriarty they were sort of saying about like uh just like little matt will do like little voice memos to jordan and go i've got this riff <laughs> send it over and it's like a <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? It's a strange. So, do you do you ever have to write music? Oh, this is a sort of silly, sillyly worded question, but is there ever a time when you need to make some music but you you can't? And so, how do you sort of get past that uh, sort of writer's block? Is that does that happen for you, or do you just let it happen organically? And I think a lot of the time now I've become a mum, and um, our little boy, he's you know a year and a half now. There's been a lot of times where I've wanted to play music but I, I haven't been able to because I've been busy you know hanging out with him and yeah. looking after him so recently I haven't had any book because as soon as I get the moment to make music I'm like yeah no. and like it all yeah quick <laughs> I have an hour I need to write an album and it's like you know so it I haven't had that recently um but in the past like usually you know going out and getting drunk and like having a fight with one of your mates or something that's usually quite good for a writer's block i find well, yeah right <laughs> <laughs> you feel so sorry for yourself the next day you're like oh yeah i've got loads to write about now <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna sing the blues yeah all day long yeah um so i was just wondering do you think music for you is born out of like i for me i was i could never write happy songs because i find them really i find the idea quite Try. I can't imagine being emotionally enough ha I'm as happy with writing something while I'm happy. I'm always a misery writer. I always write from definitely. The, yeah, but I don't know why that is because happiness should be something that you should applaud. But I'm too busy being happy at the time to want to write music. I just like the, the yeah. I find that really uh, strange. 
I know exactly what you mean. Is my dad? He won't go away. How do I get him to disappear? <laughs> that could be arranged. <laughs> I don't think he's actually far from you. If you're are you, I could do. Guard? I could make some have some, some stuff happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sad place. That's a massive um, inspiration for me. And like, if I ever do write something that's happy and maybe like in a major key, um, I'll always end up twisting it and making it into something really um, sick. Yeah. Like because I'm not happy with it being just like Cheerful happy yeah, yeah I'd, I'd, there'll be like some sort of horrible twist to the tale you know or something like that so it it's um yeah that that kind of um happy place isn't an inspiration for me no no, no. I, I i don't understand how the people that it is do it i don't i don't I can't, yeah i don't get it feel if it just for me if it feels false to me and i don't know why maybe i'm just a miserable sod um yeah, I, I know exactly exactly what you mean. I, I I can't feel authentic in that happy place. No, is that? I wonder if that's like a. I wonder if that is a. Yeah, like part of the illness of being a musician is this like. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Have, you have to mine the uh, the misery. Um, yeah, strange, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, with your new um, with your new album, what what have you uh, what have you gone in, in into the studio as do, and and like how do, how does that recording work for you are you going in and doing are you doing all the recording or are you getting musicians in to do stuff or how do you how do you do that um well usually i would have um like the song written and then i might get like when it's been a solo project i've had uh like different people come in and, and play session parts or i've played parts or we've programmed parts yeah um and the this most recent album um i was working with uh crampy the bass player uh layla drums and backing vocals and and todd um on guitar and they they put down all the parts and it was uh, like a really really awesome album yeah and um it was like we you know we toyed at the idea of being a band and making it more of a band project than a solo projects but um it do actually didn't work out because the guys they just didn't have the time right but it was just it was i felt very lucky to have them for the time i had them for yeah and it was like that was a wicked process and i think you know if i recorded anything in the future i would definitely like want to record with those guys again um because it was just that was like a unique moment in time and i think that album's kind of captured that yeah you know so but you know the next album might be just me with a wooden box and a spoon bashing it on the side <laughs> i mean i don't know yet how it's gonna go but um <laughs> but at the moment i you know um so i've got that album recorded like that and those tracks are all um in the process of being mastered and um i'm now rehearsing up with a, a new drummer so it's going to be you know just a two-piece for live which is cool and um yeah i mean it's like it's constantly evolving but i think the main thing is that um like the the vocals and the keys style is like continuous throughout yeah. you know and different members kind of have come and gone over the years have you um i've, I've had a little look i was doing a little googling and uh, you've, you've worked with some really interesting people uh, over the years um did, did i read about like harry collier and um yeah some other people i really like harry he's um he's lovely isn't he yeah yeah he was like my when i was about 14 like root juice were my ultimate heroes um yeah they were truly they were great musicians weren't they yeah. with really good songs yeah yeah truly truly so um and like amazing live as well um yeah is there any any anyone else interesting that you've had the opportunity to work with um my favorite um is like harry's kind of an ongoing i've been like collaborating with him for it must be like over 10 years now Lovely. so um yeah I, I love working with him and he's always a you know a favorite I think we've got like something unique that we've got a similar kind of twist on life and a similar sense of humor and like if I kind of go to him he's usually if I go oh I've got this idea he's like totally on points with it yeah um which is 
wonderful when you find someone like that. Yeah. And then, um, like, I've worked with a producer called Dan Carey. I don't know if you know him. He's worked with, like, The Kills and Emiliana Torini. And um, he was, like, kind of my my all-time producer, I guess, to work with. And he's, like, a, a mad wizard, you know, but, like, total genius. And he was an incredible producer and writer. And he's got this, like, epic studio in Streatham with like loads and loads of random stuff like strung up everywhere it's a bit like like a mad scientist laboratory or something <laughs> like that and um we were just like in there like cranking all these weird synths and like had these like drum machines going and I'd like ripped a drum machine off of an old like Farfasa organ or something and we were like we wrote this track around it and that was like that was pretty special um and I'd, I'd love to work with him again but then I've written with like a lot, um, have you heard of uh, The Matrix, the like writing super producer group in from LA? No. They did, they did like all of, uh, I don't know, like Britney Spears stuff. And right. they're like a writing machine. You know, you go there and they've got this studio. And that was quite a funny experience because I, I turned up at this like studio in the hills and there was this guy there and he was like, he was really quiet. And I was like, this is the matrix. They, he, I, I was expecting like this like super group of humans. And there was this, he was like really quiet and he was just like really meek. And he was like, I was going, yeah, I've got this idea and it goes like this. And, you know, I thought maybe the chorus could do this bit. And he was just kind of like looking at me and he was like, yeah, cool. Yeah, that sounds great. I was like, God, this is like the shittest writing session I've ever been to. <laughs> and I was there for like, I don't know, about an hour. And then suddenly the Matrix walked in and I didn't know what they looked like. And I this this guy was the engineer. Yeah. And like, you know, and I thought he was the Matrix. But actually, you know, they just hadn't arrived yet. And um, they turned up and like we wrote this song. It was like the most quick, like smashing out a song like I've ever experienced it was like being on a train that was like out of control <laughs> but it was wicked and like you know it was like wham bam like in two hours we had like pretty much a master yeah wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like, whoa um so that was a, a really good experience and then I mean there's so many people I've written with that I like totally love I just you, you, I guess you let your guard down and you get to know people incredibly quickly. You sort of fast track yeah. with them. And um, you like, you know, it, I, I don't think I've really had like many bad, bad collaborations, you know, like sort of. No, it's always been really positive. Yeah, it's really cool, isn't it? I mean, like um, I always I, I'm always grateful of the relationships musically that are built up because you build that shorthand of them. And like you were saying with Harry, you kind of just you're on the same page and you just kind of you, someone will just your ideas will escalate together. And that's a beautiful yeah. thing. I've never really worked with anybody that I don't have that relationship with. So I, I couldn't imagine just going somewhere and just like going, right, I've got this idea and they sort of. Yeah, that sounds amazing. It sounds really uh, alien to me. Um, yeah, it was quite because I, I was working with um, uh, like a label at the time. So they were literally sending me like all over the world to collaborate with different producers and they were trying to figure out like who would be the best kind of yeah. uh, fit. marriage. Uh, yeah, the yeah. best fit. So I got to at, there was a certain time about seven years ago where I got to to work with like, ev you know, pretty much everyone who was sort of on the map at the time, like, you know, Dr. Luke or um, Sam and Sluggo in the States. And then I was like working with some really cool Swedish producers um, called Random. And like, there were all these different people that I was like, got flown around to go and write songs with. And it was like the most creative, like interesting time. I loved it. Yeah. And now like I've carried on that I, I do love collaborating and I, I, you know, it's one of my favorite things to do. And I still like continue to do that. I, I love taking a song to, you know, another songwriter and seeing where we go with it. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, no, it's really yeah. cool. It's quite brave, really. I think I, I'm, for me, music, writing music is like a really, uh, like a small little 
uh, idea embryo, and it and it and it's very very gentle, and and it needs a lot of the right kind of encouragement. Otherwise, it just dies and yeah, doesn't doesn't go anywhere. Um, yeah, yeah. Is there um another thing that I've been trying to find out from people? Is there any one that you particularly like that you would like to? shine a light on and uh sort of like a lot of unsigned i've been trying to find out about like sort of unsigned people in the community of the local community i mean I, we, we're quite local but i've had lots of people from various places come on um is there anything that you like at the minute yeah there's there's quite a few things um at the moment that i love I, i'm just trying to think i mean um do you know kai skervik um his name's spelled like k-a-j it's a Swedish name, I think. And right. um, he's like, he's a really interesting guy because he's a great songwriter, but and he's like a great performer and he ends up doing, well, lots of different gigs, but some people, you know, they like booking him for their weddings and stuff because he does wicked covers. Yeah. Um, but he's a great, great writer too. Um, I'm just trying to think who else sort of locally that... Um, I really like uh, Pixie and Bubs, who I used to be in a band with. They've got their band Wax, um, which is like a sort of uh, bass and drum duo. Okay. And they're they're wicked. They're doing loads. And um, Crampy's bands. Rakes. Uh, Rakes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're doing loads of good stuff. Yeah, they're good. They're really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's like there's a lot of talent around and um i mean off the top of my head those are the people i'm sort of thinking of i'll probably like yeah, get off loads. this call to you later and go oh yeah them <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Look, trying to access the part of your brain that's responsible for the information you need is a pain in the ass um yeah i'm terrible yeah. for it I'm, I, I'm exactly the same um so yeah i'm quite dyslexic so i've got this like problem with my brain where i can see like who i'm supposed to be saying but the words don't come out so i'll yeah. be like you know, the so one so. who, <laughs> and I'll have this like most random like <laughs> image of something. I'll be like, you know, they were there that time and they had like that, you know, velvet green shoe on there. It'll be, I don't know. And it'll be like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm I, won't know, I won't know their name. I'm exactly the same. I have friends that I'm lucky enough that can sort of interpret the nonsense. I just like, yes. I'm, I'm just surrounding myself with people that I can just say, you know, the the long talker. Um. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly, yeah. <laughs> I met up with um, a friend and, uh, well, she, she's uh, like a, um, what is she? Well, she works at Cultivator and she's helping me um, apply for some arts council funding yeah and she's called rosie as well and we're both dyslexic and we both have problems with our jaws at the moment and we were laughing because it was like the blind leading the blinds we were just like sat there trying to like describe stuff and it was just such a funny situation our jaws both locked at one point and then we were like trying to like describe this situation yeah it was quite funny <laughs> <laughs> so what 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 are your hopes for your like if you had your your dream scenario come up what is your hope for your music career of the of, in the next sort of like few years if you could i mean obviously within you know like take as much have as much uh, leeway as you like go go as far as you want as far as i want um well i think like since i started doing music 10 years ago the i had these like goals which was to always wanted to play glastonbury yeah i've always always wanted to i've played loads and loads of festivals um but i've never played glastonbury so that's like um a big one and the other one is like jules hollands i mean maybe you know that would be a big big sort of tick on the yeah you know that that is such a great show and then um to get playlisted on like maybe six music or something would be awesome and and touring um more extensively in the uk europe and the states those are like uh big you know if i could like have no limits those are the things yeah. i'd like to be doing and and just like going out and gigging and meeting lots of people and like selling some records to them maybe or you know like even if they didn't have the money to buy the record just like come and watch me play or yeah, yeah. you know just like and go and see some other people and like when I was in um, 
my last band, Rosie and the Goldbug, like we we had like that opportunity to kind of go, sorry, I'm putting my finger in front of the camera. <laughs> we had that opportunity to go like, you know, do a huge amount and tour all over the place. And I'm kind of like, I was, you know, much younger then. And I, I think maybe I like missed some like insight or some opportunities because maybe I was like in a different zone. And now I know like if I had those opportunities again, I'd, I'd it would be, so much more enriching like I, I remember like being on the tour bus and just like kind of like constantly sleeping to try and like maintain energy levels and yeah, but yeah. I don't know like a certain way I was doing stuff and like maybe I didn't get to meet as many people as I'd like to or interact with other musicians and stuff because I was so like in this particular zone so yeah. yeah to like have that opportunity again would be would be amazing and uh, I'd love to like take, um, you know, my husband and baby boy as well on on that journey because that would be like Amazing. that would be really good fun. Yeah. And the dog, of course. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> the family tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. I, I I love I love the idea of like playing Glastonbury or something like that is is a is a dream, absolute dream. Have you played? No, that would be that would be my life goal yeah that's, yeah that would probably be it for me i'd um i'd be pretty content with that um yeah it's hard isn't it i mean yeah and also you know i i understand what you're saying like when you're sort of doing that tour mentality you're on you're on like sort of damage limitation aren't you you're like yeah i've, got to, exactly I've got to get it. through it i've got to get through it i have to i have to play every gig i can't miss any gigs i can't get ill i can't yeah do you know what i mean i'm i'm like traveling around i gotta just i just gotta head down and i understand that it's um damage limitation isn't it absolutely that's exactly what it is yeah yeah, yeah totally yeah and i I'd, i think like i'd like to you know think that i could do touring differently and schedule it differently so i could maybe like lap it up a little bit more so it's not just going from venue to venue and yeah and like sort of try not to get breathed on by someone's yeah. flute <laughs> You need like a little bubble or something around yeah you. bubble yeah do you know it was so bad we we went on tour um, with Cindy Lauper in 2008 and um our sound engineer got flu yeah and we were like don't tell anyone because like they'll kick us off the tour <laughs> and then everyone came down with flu including oh Cindy God. and it was just so bad and like she did this gig and she like she was a legend she like performed to like it was like a few thousand people in Vienna and then she came off the side of the stage and, like literally like passed out God. she was so ill with flu and that came from Cornwall that came from like our sound engineer we'd like infected her it was so bad <laughs> oh man I hate it I, I like I have like if I see it if I know any of my friends are ill I just I'm like as a singer I'm like just don't see me don't come over I yeah wanna, I don't want to see you I just want to like yeah it's bad it's yeah really bad. it's a real singer's paranoia is terrible isn't it yeah um, it's yeah really bad. so are you um you've got some gigs coming up this year is there anything that you're excited about playing um some of the festivals that have been coming up in devon and cornwall have been awesome like they're we played um the great estate last year oh awesome oh, i want to see that yeah i'd like to go to it's that. so good mm. so i'm hoping i'll get to play there again because i really enjoyed that and um i played port elliot last year so i'm hoping to play on that again yeah yeah so i'm i you know it just depends i'm trying to figure out you know when to release this album and like with the pr behind it and stuff and you know, maybe I've like might have missed some of the bookings for the festivals. I don't know because like they're they're starting to announce a lot of people at the it's moment. Like, it's like October, isn't it? September, September, yeah. October for the next year, which is like real yeah. pain in the butt, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, it's quite full on. Yeah. So yeah, we'll have to see. But there's like um, a few things that I've got booked in that I'm probably not allowed to say yet, but. Yeah. One, I mean, the food festival in Port Levin, that's going to be good. Lovely. And that's getting, like, bigger and, like, better every year. Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And, of course, you know, it's my hometown. So yeah. that's, like, quite good fun. You can literally... Roll in and roll, roll out. out. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just get me a wheelbarrow. <laughs> 
Yeah, I love. I lo I've played a couple of gigs where I've walked to the gig, and I'm just that is amazing. Just carry, so carry good, my little sack it? up. Yeah, it's great. I love yeah, it. I'm a big fan of yeah. that. Yeah, that's the worst part of gigging. I think is like the the journey, like sort of because you know sometimes people don't understand like a show is it, it, it's pretty much a nine hour shift usually, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's like from start to finish. So when you get like a little cheat and there's a gig just down the road, it's like, yes. Amazing. That was literally, yeah. <laughs> I'll do those for nothing. I'll do those for free. Yeah. I'll be like, yeah. just, just so I go, yeah, I'm in and out, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so nice. Yeah, so rare. Um, I, I feel like we're going to run out of time. So um, I just, this is a short episode today, but thank you very much. Um, is, is there anywhere people could go and check out your uh, music and um, uh, what you're doing? Yeah, um, my site is uh, rosythecrow.co.uk. That's under construction at the moment. We're just doing a few tweaks, but that should be up and running before, you know, very soon. But in the meantime, everything's on all the socials, you know, like Facebook's really good. Um, yeah. Pretty much that's got everything running through it. So, um, yeah, that's facebook.com forward slash Rosie the Crow music. Yeah. And then, yeah, there's like some SoundCloud links and YouTube links and stuff like that. There's cool. a couple of videos that people can check out and I'm like updating stuff all the time on there. Excellent. And yeah, if they, anyone wants to get in touch or anything, I'm always around. Well, I say that unless my little boy has attacked me or something. <laughs> <laughs> And I won't be around. Yeah, okay. But... Well, <laughs> no, that's lovely. Well, thank you so much. And um, yeah, go and check out Rosie's stuff. Um, we'll, I'll see you at Pop 11. Um, cool. If not before. All right, well, thanks ever so much. This has been the Noise Foot Podcast. We'll see you again. Cheerio. Goodbye. Cheerio. <laughs>